What's going on you guys? This is your boy RBG bringing you another video on Transformers movies. Paramount's writer's room isn't getting any sleep because they are trying to deal out some of the greatest movies revolving around the autonomous organisms known as the Autobots and the Deceptive Robots known as the Decepticons. And we got some new and interesting details on what we can expect for the next installment in the live action franchise, so stay tuned. Now before we dive into today's topic, I want to ask you guys to do me the biggest favor and like this video. Yeah, I know it's a bit annoying getting this request at the very beginning of the video when you haven't watched it in its entirety, but YouTube's algorithm encourages it. So if you rock with your boy and you know I'm going to bring you that awesome content, then smash that like button. And if by any chance you make it to the tail end of this video and felt like you wasted minutes of your time that you can't get back, then by all means take that like back and give it a dislike. Just rate the video. But guys, as of this month, it has officially been 40 years since Transformers has been released to the general public. Yeah, that's right. This franchise has been going strong for over four decades and it's still continuing to do its thing. When it comes to the movies, however, things have started to kind of decline in terms of ticket sales, but Paramount is adamant about getting things back to the way they were back when they had our full attention. Ever since Transformers The Last Night failed at the box office, we've seen a major overhaul a course correction, if you will, of new things that fans have been asking for for what seems like an eternity. Fans are finally getting a chance to see their favorite characters look like the ones they saw in the yesteryears of G1, not to mention that they've gotten a chance to see the Beast Wars cast in all their epic glory. But despite all these amazing things, there have been a few caveats that have prevented these movies from reaching the heights that they need to. And I think that's largely due in part to the actual producers of these films not knowing where they want to go. We've mentioned this time and time again, but it seems like they still continue to throw different things to the wall and hope that they stick only to see them fall flat on their faces. And I feel like these movies really need to give us a general idea of the direction they want to go in instead of throwing all those Hail Marys. There's also the very confusing interviews done by the executive producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura. As you're aware, this is the guy that actually approves of everything before it actually hits the silver screen. And he's managed to make his fair share of enemies out of the Transformers community because anytime we see him, we just know that there's going to be this conundrum when it comes to these live action movies. We know when he stepped in and halted the director's vision from being what it needed to truly be. For example, when Travis Knight, the director of Bumblebee, said he wanted to make something that was faithful to G1, he mentioned that he couldn't because he needed to abide to the continuity that was established from the Bay films. And that's one of many reasons I believe he never returned to direct the sequel to Bumblebee, because he didn't feel like having that corporate hand on his shoulder at all times. You can say the same thing for Transformers Rise of the Beast director Steven Capel Jr. I still remember that interview where fans asked if Rise of the Beast was an actual reboot or if it was in the same continuity as the Bayformers, which once again, Lorenzo intervened and said that it was connected to the Bayformers, but you could think of it as its own thing, which once again, that just confuses people. So yeah, it's understandable why fans believe that once this guy leaves the franchise entirely, the better it will be later on down the line. But anyways guys, our good old buddy Lorenzo Di Bonaventura recently had an interview hosted by comicbook.com talking about the possible Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover in the live action movies. If you watch Transformers Rise of the Beast and stay glued to your seats to the very end, you may have noticed that the post credit stinger featured another franchise that Hasbro has been trying to get off the ground, which is G.I. Joe. A film franchise that began its development back in 2003 and manifested in 2009 all the way to 2021. They have had three attempts at trying to make G.I. Joe a box office juggernaut only to deal out a total of three films that accumulated in only $715 million total. People just aren't interested in watching the G.I. Joes on the big screen. Funny enough, The Rock, who was at the height of his career, the guy that was considered to be franchise Viagra, couldn't even motivate his fan base to come and sit in theaters and watch these movies. So yeah, Hasbro and Paramount have been desperately trying to get this franchise off the ground and now have resorted to piggybacking off of one of their more lucrative properties, that being the Transformers franchise, which once again isn't the big cash cow that it once was. It's kind of funny because I remember when they were talking about pitching an idea for G.I. Joe and Paramount ultimately chose Transformers because they felt like it was going to generate more money. Fast forward 20 years later and we see that Transformers really isn't in the best shape right now 
So I find it funny and a bit strange that they're actually betting all their chips on a franchise that never caught its footing to revitalize the Transformers movie franchise. But getting back on topic guys, yeah, comicbook.com recently sat down with Lorenzo to talk about his latest film, Madam Web, and they managed to squeeze in a question regarding the crossover between Transformers and G.I. Joe, and he admitted that there was still a lot up in the air, but that it would happen at some point in the future, saying and I quote, The honest truth is, I don't know. I know we are going to deliver on the promise we made. So as you hear, Lorenzo de Ventura is dead set on doing this crossover which he feels like is gonna actually be a ultimate promise to the fans. But I don't think he quite understands that a lot of fans aren't feeling this. It's funny that this guy is the producer to Madam Web because fans aren't feeling that movie as well. You know, it hasn't really been doing good with the word of mouth it's been getting. Not to mention that the actual actors associated with it really don't want to talk about it. Like if I'm not mistaken, the lead actress who's portraying Madam Web fired her manager shortly after the movie was revealed. So that is a pretty strong indication that this movie just isn't good and most of the movies that have been produced by Lorenzo de Ventura haven't been good in general. He's also the executive producer of those said G.I. Joe films I mentioned earlier so yeah. This is just my honest opinion but I feel like they should just stick to the Transformers because that's still their golden goose at the end of the day. They still have a lot of energon left off in the chamber and I feel like they can do great things if they stick to this course correction that they're going on. We already have a problem with the human characters taking most of the screen time, so how do you think fans are going to feel when they see these humans in G.I. Joe outfits doing essentially what those other characters did that we've been complaining about? And if this is a reboot to the G.I. Joe franchise, I feel like this is a little too fast. If they're going to reintroduce us to the real American heroes, they need to make sure that they give them a solo film before they even think about crossing them over with the Transformers. Because chances are we might not see the true potential of those characters. Like let's not forget that Transformers Rise of the Beast boasted the Beast character's namesake in the title, but unfortunately due to the bloated roster we didn't get a chance to see what the characters could actually do. Like don't get me wrong, they looked really good and faithful to the source material, but in my honest opinion they kind of felt like the Dinobots did in Transformers Age of Extinction, where they were on the marquee but we didn't get that big action sequence from them until the very tail end of the movie. And many fans including myself have already said that the Transformers Beast Wars characters should have gotten their own movie before being featured with the main alumni of characters. And that's the same thing I feel about the G.I. Joe cast. They should have their own movie before we see them cross paths with the Autobots and Decepticons. Like if you're trying to build up this new Hasbro universe, why not do it the proper way and allow each storyline to breathe in their own individual movie? That's all I'm saying guys. But anyways, that's all I got for you today. I want to know your thoughts on this. Do you feel like Transformers Cross G.I. Joe would be a successful movie? Or do you feel like Hasbro and Paramount are rushing into things and they're ultimately going to see another dud at the box office? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed this video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on all the different social media outlets. Sharing is caring. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. Yeah!